Well, I'm working on the center rollers for these uh, little clamps. And what I've done is I've set up my hand wheel collet chuck. And I think you've seen me use it before, but we'll take a, go over and take a look. But anyway, I cut my pieces to length, and I've already faced off one end in them. And what I've done is put a stop in my um, little 5C collets. And the way this works is I've just built a little um, plug for the back end. It's threaded in the center, quarter 20, and then I can just run it in there and uh, put a lock nut on the back end to set my length. Now what I want to do is when I've got it set up for the next operation, I'm going to put the side that I've already turned down in and um, I want to stop against that, then I'm going to face off the other side, but then I want to drill it and probably tap it there too, but I at least want to get it drilled. So the way I've addressed that to be able to drill through without hitting my little stop here is I just take a little coupling nut and if we thread a coupling nut on there and it doesn't really matter how far just so we've got some clearance on the inside of it we lock that in place and we set our length and we can drill right to the center of it we're not affecting anything so that's what I've got going right now so we just set that right on there and lock it in place so it can't go any place we've got lots of clearance down through the center of our 5C. For that coupling nut. And we're just bottoming out our little stop there. That's in place. Now we can adjust our rod for length. Let's go ahead and put our lock nut on there. Goes on there like that. And we take our stock with our already machined side, set it down in there for whatever length we want, and that's going to be just about enough to hold it in position. Put our lock nut on there and give it just a little gronk and there we're set for length. Repeatable through all of them. So we'll just measure it out, get our length of cut set right, which is a little bit of trial and error. We'll have to cut it once or twice and, and then uh, throw a pair of calipers on it to make sure we've got the right size and then we can go ahead and turn them all down. They'll all be exactly the same. All right, this is pretty straightforward operation, you know, with the exception of doing a little bit of stuff by hand. But anyway, all I'm doing is taking my machined end, put it into my collet closer, or the collet chuck, bottom it out like that. Kind of awkward with the camera here, but lock it in place. Now there can be something said for having the... 5C call it chuck that's got the uh, chuck key on it because you may be able to be more consistent with how tight you tighten them down. Um, I really like the hand wheel. I've got both. I've got the, the 5C uh, call it chuck that takes a key. Um, I prefer using this one because it's a little bit faster, but for consistency with a stop like this in this application, the other one might be a little more accurate because you can be more consistent on how tight you tighten it down. Now I feel like I'm fairly consistent with this, but there is some variation and the farther back you pull it, why the deeper it's going to draw the material in with the uh, with the chuck itself. So anyway, we're going to proceed here and all we're doing is facing it off
In this case, I'm just knocking the edge off with the file here on this outer edge. And that's plenty. And we'll center drill it. I'm way out of position here. I don't know if I can do this or not. I know we're not going to be able to tap it this way. drill all the way through because that uh, of the stop in the back now all that's left is to tap it and I actually take a another drill chuck that I'm not using right now I just open it up to that diameter so it accepts the back of my collet or uh, the back of my tap wrench my small tap wrench um, so that's all that's left on this is to tap it, and I'll have to flip them around and deburr them. Probably deburr both ends a little bit, but this is what you end up with. Is your part just like that. Like I say, this end has to be deburred yet, countersunk slightly. Um, but that's what it is. I'm going to go ahead and tap this off camera because I can't reach around there to do anything. But that's the general setup. So quick and easy. All right. Well, what I'm doing is to match the bevel. I'm shortening up the, I'm narrowing down the heads on these little button heads. And what I'm doing is this is one of the spacers that I've been turning. Left it in there without moving it, that way it stays concentric to the world. Just take and set our screw through a flat washer, tacked as a little spacer. And we are threading it in there and using this uh, one little spacer as a mandrel. Then I've already got my depth cuts or my depth set so they're all exactly the same. And all we have to do is a quick little run across them just like that. And we've converted our heads down so they're not quite as big around. And I'll hit them on the buffer very lightly just to knock any rough edges that are off of them. But that's all there is to making them a little more uh, user friendly there. Alright, these are our little pivot pins that hold our bolts going through in the top of the, uh, in the top just like that. And what I'm doing is just rough turning. Now I'm, even though they're all supposed to be exactly the same, I'm, uh, I'm going to do final fit on these to each individual individual pocket. The difference is going to be any spacing variations we have in this because we want it to have a nice easy or nice free movement down in there. So anyway what we're doing is I'm just kind of facing them off and I'm doing this all just with a parting tool.
can go down different parts. Okay, almost done. So there's a completed one. So the only thing we have left to do for these four is to take and uh, we're going to drill it in the center for 5 16 bolts and then we're going to machine off the top of it. So that they end up like that right there. So the completed clamp itself will be just like that. So the next thing to do is just go to the milling machine and finish the machining on these. So I'm really happy with that. That's a handsome little piece of jewelry. Alright, here's our round body. All I'm going to do is set them up, deck off the top. I've already got the machine set up, so we're just going to deck this off to height. Then we're going to go ahead and drill it. Now, one caution about this, this is stainless, and um, one thing you want to be aware of is you once you get your tools to cutting, you want to keep cutting with them, because if you dawdle along with it why it'll work hard and very very quickly and you're you're not going to get a hole through it then or get it machined off then if that's the case so just once you get to cutting especially on on these stainlesses like this why just uh, be fairly aggressive with it and stay after it you know it'll work fine low speeds don't try and run them at you know 2000 rpm so at the when I'm decking them off with carbide here, I'm using, I'm running about 2,000 RPM, which is about the max for this machine right now. Um, but once we, uh, once I get to drilling them with high speed steel, why I'm running slow speeds, I'm only running about 500 RPM. Alright, here's the first completed clamp, and this is the way it's going to sit on the mill. I think size-wise, it's uh, I think it's just about ideal. I'm really happy with it. Um, came out very nicely. I've got the anodizing dialed in. This is going to have applications on the milling machine, the shaper, and if you're using a uh, boring table on your lathe, why it will fit all of them. All the T-slots are the same, so I think this is going to be a very uh, 
functional hold down device. First set of four done and uh, I'm really happy with them. We're going to have to work on a probably a stud kit. We're going to set up a set of uh, a complete set of bolts, grade 8 bolts with hardened washers and everything for clamp downs for clamping bolts on these, but I think we'll also develop a set of studs with and some T-nuts for them and everything so we're pretty much universal for them. But here's the first four done. I am exceptionally happy with them. They came out just wonderfully here. There's our Hills gun logo. I've got a little more polishing to do on the ends of the on the ends of the rockers, but uh, other than that, they came out quite nicely. I am very very happy with that. So hopefully you found this a little bit interesting. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for these, and um, we've got quite a bit more stuff coming out in the future. So any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.